Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market. I mean, if you were watching the chart, you are like, holy moly, because CPI comes out, which I'm gonna go into, boom, market just takes off like you expect it to because it basically came in uh, as what they thought it was gonna be. And then what happened? Ooh, we're gonna get into that. Normally I go through the charts last, but I'm gonna start off with them first and, and sprinkle in the news and then go into a rant at the end, which, you know, is just stunning to me, but I guarantee you, most Americans don't even know this. And I'm curious to see if you're in another country, is this how it works uh, with your Congress as well? And I'm talking about those fools that are in charge of this debt ceiling thing that they still don't have worked out, by the way. First, let's start off with this right here. This is a two minute chart of the S&P today. And what does that look like to you? It looks like one of my favorite things in the world, a roller coaster, does it not? So we can all start off with a good laugh in this video. DJ, cue my favorite video of all time. And so hopefully you got just a good a laugh out of that as I did because that's exactly what it looked like today. I mean, we were like, ooh, going to the moon? Oh, I don't think so. And then, of course, what happened at the very end of the day is exactly what I told the members this morning. And we scroll down to the bottom here. That's what I was talking about. The bulls have absolutely fought like crazy. Sorry, these are like some uh, long morning briefs in the morning there sometimes, but the bulls have successfully defended the 410, 412 area like crazy this week, looking to break the 416. Keep in mind, you got the debt ceiling thing rolling over. And what do they do? They recapture that 410, 412 area. They keep doing it over and over. And this is what I've been saying about CPI for about four or five months now. I said, look at what's happening when you look over here at these drops, right? Nice big drop, 0. 0.6, nice big drop over there. And then you go from six to five, and now to 4.9, you're like, hmm, and this is headline. So you're like, wait a minute. So how is the market gonna react when core is barely budging, and then headline is just stay sticky, and it's only maybe not dropping at all, or dropping just by a little bit? That's what we gotta start paying attention to, okay? And you can see right here what I'm talking about. This is uh, year over year, which I don't really care about, but month over month's what I like. But year over year, you can see big drop right there in headline CPI. But you look at core and you're like, hmm, kind of kind of going sideways here. What's going on here, right? That's less food and energy, right? Which is the most volatile. And when you look at it overall, you go, let's see, this is where the Fed is trying to get us to right around this area right here. So that's gonna take a, a, a nice big drop. And if you look over there to the left in the late 70s, early 80s, that was the Volcker area. You go, wait a minute, CPI, you know, core and everything else dropped off a cliff. Well, the reason why, because he raised uh, rates to 20% and he held them and he drove us into a recession. That's how you get the inflation to come down really fast like that, okay? And so that's why you see the Fed even saying, hey, we're definitely gonna have a mild recession for sure, because they know if they hold rates this high and inflation stays sticky, that the economy, the way they designed it, isn't really made to do that. And if you're liking this video, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button. That will be the thumbs up right below the video there. Just go ahead and hit that for me. I sure do appreciate it and all your support. And if you like this kind of content, think about subscribing. And going into some other charts here, guys, you got the cues. It's very simple. One, two, three rejections off this ascending wedge right here. And so if it breaks above this, understand we have a bullish day tomorrow when PPI comes out or whatever and you get the reaction I think people were thinking we were going to get. We're either gonna fill this gap right here, which is less than 1% above where we're at, which is nothing for the Qs, or what it famously likes to do, and even stocks do this a lot, is jump over the gap, right? And leave an even bigger gap to be filled later on, right? So pay attention to that very closely. We do have PPI coming out tomorrow, which is what the Fed likes to look at as well. And sometimes you get these delayed reactions, right? And so AMD, boy oh boy, one, two, three, four, five days up, right? Not overbought on the RSI, bullish MACD cross, crossing over the zero line. And understand the next hurdle right there is around 102.60, which it highly, highly respects. Uh, going back even a couple years, do you look at that right there? And so if it breaks through that, obviously, and it's almost right there, sitting at 97 something. So if it breaks through that, yeah, it's gonna keep on going and start pulling in NVIDIA. So just pay attention. Google, wow, what a day for Google. Finally broke above that dang trend line right there. That's that resistance line, excuse me. And if you look right there, of course, what's happening, you know, it's not overbought, bullish MACD cross. What caused all this, what woke it up? 
Well, they said the word AI 543 times at a presentation today, and they rolled out AI on everything. Text messages, Gmail, workforce, you name it. They're going all in on AI. Shocker there. And it just so happened to wait the stock up like it has every other stock, right? Amazon finally had a breakout uh, above that resistance right there, like 108 area, breaking out of this uh, triangle right here peeking his head above it we'll see if it actually stays above it this time and you can see it's not overbought so still has room to run bullish macd cross on the daily again totally overbought on the, the hourly here so look for a slight pullback right there because the rsi actually is uh, coming down while the stock's still going up so let's see if we get a pullback tomorrow or we just keep going crazy and understand what's about to happen something ain't happened in a long time this, if this momentum continues for amazon since this has been one of the laggers is a golden cross for the 50 going over the 200 and you can see it's been quite a long time since it's had one and so if you look because again this one likes to trace sideways for a long period of time so it's hard for that to happen but it looks like that might finally happen for uh this stock because it's happened for a whole lot of other stocks so we'll see and that's a bullish thing if it does now paypal put this up here we talked about it yesterday uh, I told people, I said, hey, man, I had to go back hard and find resistance, right? And, and support, excuse me, not resistance. But you can see what happened. It kept selling off today because there was no support there, right? After that big drop here, big drop yesterday. But then right at that trend line, I told you about, it bounced perfectly. Now, is it going to maintain? We'll have to see because you can see, I mean, on the RSI, it is oversold like crazy. Looks like the MACD on the, on the hourly wants to do a bullish MACD crossover. But, you know, if we kind of scroll back here and look, you can see in 2017, like I said, it moved up so fast. But right here, you can see on the hourly here, there's some support right there around 63-ish. And then right around 59, if it goes below 59, then, well, the stock's probably in a lot more trouble than we actually thought it was. So pay attention to that. Now, I know there's still people out there saying, man, this whole market's rallying and all that stuff, but the truth is this is getting worse and worse. Remember I told you the top 10 stocks in the S&P accounted for 88% of the move. Now it is 95% of the move, the top 10 stocks. And all you do is look at their charts to see it. I mean, look at AMD, NVIDIA, all of them, right? I mean, imagine if Tesla actually wakes back up and starts roaring towards 200, if Amazon finally breaks out, if Google finally breaks out, what this number is going to actually be. Now, does that mean other stocks cannot contribute? Absolutely. If the other stocks start to come up and contribute, then yeah, you, you're definitely going to be having this market move up much, much faster. But again, are they going to contribute? That's that's the key, right? So we got small caps struggling like crazy, all kinds of other sectors struggling. So you have to keep that in mind. Now, going into earnings, again, not going to have like some crazy day like you did uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. But you do have JD.com, uh, Fiverr, Yeti. And then on the right side, I don't really see anything This I even want to talk about. If you do, put it down in the comments. If you see anything you see, I'm just not really familiar with a lot of those companies. Now, we do have a lot of jobless claims data coming out tomorrow at 8.30. And then there's PPI. And that's what the Fed really likes to look at. I think we had a good move on this last time. They are expecting this to drop again. And so we'll see. Even though it's funny, is core PPI is expected to actually... Uh, be up 0.2 percent prior was minus 0.1 so again all this all the core readings are much harder to bring down now that brings me into my rant for the day and again i want this in every video but if there's something to rant about yeah i'm gonna say it and what really disturbs me and i guarantee most people don't know this because we're thinking like common sense folks here right that the fact that you know i'm seeing this representative you know he's, he's being investigated for something all this other stuff but remember there's still fighting about the in, in the uh, debt ceiling stuff right still going over that remember congress is a pretty important group of people right i mean they control the purse you know they, they control social security how it goes medicare they can cut them at a whim military spending where the military gets raised or not you know all kind of stuff education spending you name it right so you would think there would be a whole lot of qualifications and we'd have the, the bar raised high but for those of you who don't know believe it or not you can actually be convicted of a crime, and I was talking about this one of the members, and sent to prison, and you can continue to serve in Congress and do your job. Matter of fact, you can run as Congress while you're in jail. Isn't that crazy? But so here, here's what's crazy. Look, this is the qualifications, by the way, to actually be, just say, a representative. Say you want to be a representative. That's where most people start. All you got to be, 25 years old and the United States citizens for at least seven years and an inhabitant of the state you want to represent. 
And to prove to you what I'm talking about when it comes to this gel stuff, believe it or not, we have had back in the day, and this is a while back, right? Two previous candidates actually ran for president while serving in prison. You do not get stopped from doing that. And I don't know about you, but it disturbs me to think these are the people in charge of raising the debt ceiling and in charge of the budget and, and in charge. And it kind of, I guess, explains a lot, right? Because the bar ain't high for these people. You know, you've probably seen the people in your area being like, how did that person win? But the fact that the qualifications to go flip burgers, right, are to go in the military and go in the infantry to go serve in combat are higher than it is to go serve in Congress, who actually oversees all of this stuff, is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Now, one of our members told us, and I got to look this up, but he said, you don't even have to have a law degree to serve on the Supreme Court. At this point in time, it wouldn't surprise me. And I'll be honest with you. I didn't even know you could be a felon or actually get elected in prison until about a year ago because I thought common sense wise, oh, you got to have some qualifications, something. Nope. Nope. That's it. Right. As a senator, you got to be a little older to run for senator. But no, you, you can be you can hold you can ha have some horrific crimes right on, on your resume and, and people can still elect you. Don't even matter. Isn't that crazy? I mean, think about that. Your job. If you got convicted of a felony, would you be allowed to keep your job? Would you be allowed to work from prison? If you were in jail, could you call your company, who you don't work for at that point in time, but apply for a job at the company you work for and get a job while you're in prison? No, I mean, I hope the answer is no. I can't think of one. Can you think of one? I cannot think of one besides this right here. And this is ridiculous. These are the people in charge. There's nothing in the Constitution, nothing in there saying they can't run. How many, be honest, how many people, how many of you actually knew that? Any of that, let me know. And if you're not in this country, is it that way in your country too? Now, don't get me wrong. I know why our forefathers didn't put it in there because they just thought people, you know, there's no way that our parties would get so divided and, and hate each other so much that they would sit there and, and ever back it up, right? If, if it ever happened, right? But you got a guy in Congress now, this dude lies about everything. He's, he's got multiple investigations on him. He just got up there and they said, yeah, we're going to swear him in, even though the majority of people that voted him in because he lied to him so much said, no, we don't want him sworn in. They didn't care. Whatever. Don't matter. And so if you ever wonder how some of these people are getting elected or why they are so bad at their jobs, it's because of the qualifications. Nobody's vetting them. You know, we don't look into it. We just go up there and RD, whatever, put the same people back in over and over and then go to the bar, drink a beer and gripe about them. But it's like, that is insane to me. You know, 90% of us agree there should be term limits. How about we start a new drive and say, let's, let's say, how about some qualifications? How about you cannot be a felon? You cannot serve in prison because guess what? It's going to happen. Like, you don't think it's going to happen. It's going to happen. How about this? You can't run for office and get on the ballot if you're in prison. How about we start there? Can we all agree on that one? I mean, for crying out loud. Oh, I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. So anyway, that's my rant for the day. Again, be here tomorrow because it's going to be interesting with PPI. We'll see if we get another roller coaster day. I wouldn't mind playing that video again because it makes me laugh. But anyway, if you got something out of it, hit the like, subscribe button. Thanks, and I appreciate you watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Dude.